Shalom Shalom, everyone, and nearly Shabbat Shalom. Today is Friday. Today is the fourth day of the Hebrew month of Kislev. Uh, today is November the 17th, and we're about to read uh, the seventh portion in the book of Genesis, starting, uh, in, starting in chapter 20, 25, verse 19. And uh, this is also my bar mitzvah portion, so I find, uh, I find a lot of uh, relevance with this portion to, to my own life. And... Um, and this portion actually brings under the spotlight a very serious question. Um, in the book of Micah, in the book of Micah, uh, the prophecy is about, uh, the, 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 there is a section that's, that, that talks about God giving grace uh, to Abraham and truth for Jacob. Give, you give grace to, to Abraham and truth for Jacob. And the Jewish, uh, the Jewish tradition talks about, about a, um, a characteristic, a virtue, that each one of our of our patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, each one carries a very specific one. Abraham carries the virtue of grace. Abraham is a man of grace. He is a man of hospitality. We can see him, you know, bringing in the guests. He's sitting in the door in the doorway, uh, in the opening of his tent um, after being circumcised, and it's in the heat of the day, and he's looking for guests. He's waiting for people to come in. That's Abraham. Uh, Isaac has the the uh, the virtue of heroism. He's a hero, and why do we say that he was a hero? Because when when the time uh, during the time when Abraham took him to Mount Moriah to put him on the altar, if we do the calculation, we see that Isaac was was not a little. He was not a young boy. He was thirty seven years old, and uh, and 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 a hundred and thirty seven year old man like Abraham cannot just you know take a thirty seven year old and put him on the altar himself. The 37-year-old would have to agree. Isaac agreed. Isaac understood. He knew exactly what was going on, and he was willing to give himself for the cause. And that's why Isaac is considered to be the hero. He was he 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 was really the one to hand over himself, to, to, to surrender himself. And Jacob has the virtue of truth. And that's where we find the challenge. Because when we read this week's portion and we read about the blessings, you know, the blessings that were given to Abraham and from Abraham to Isaac. And then and then from Isaac, Isaac had two sons, twins, actually. And Isaac intended to give the blessings to Esav, to, Esau, to, to Esau. He was uh, he was the firstborn. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and when Rebecca hears that, she plots uh, along with Jacob and she says, you know, you have to get the blessings. You have to go in and let's do it like this. You know, you, you're going to wear uh, something of your brother's and I'm going to I'm going to make the, the food that your brother you, that your father loves. And you're going to stand before your 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 blind father and you're going to tell him that you are Esau just so that you have the blessings. The blessings must be yours. And and we see that when uh, when 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 Jacob is standing before Isaac, uh, Isaac is saying the voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's. I mean, what's going on here? And and when when he's asking him, who are you, my son? And he says, I'm Esau, your your firstborn. That's that's not. I mean, I mean, for us, I mean, knowing, I mean, that's not right. I mean, it's not right to lie for sure. And not only that, not only the Jacob is lying here. It seems that he's lying. He is lying about something which is going to be relevant for all the generations to come. I mean, should we now bear uh, the guilt and the and the doubts of whether whether we we are uh, we, whether we are actually the chosen ones? Maybe maybe these are the Edomites that God actually wanted, and it's only because of Jacob's lie, his deception, way way back. Only because of that. We say that we are the chosen ones, and base and maybe there is maybe maybe it's the whole thing is one big mistake. How do we deal with that? And and one of the answers that we find in Judaism is that there is the truth in life, as the way we see it, the human truth, and there is the truth of the higher truth. We call it the truth of all truths. That's a higher truth. And what do we what, what do we mean when we say the higher truth? When we look, for example, at at uh, at God speaking to Abraham, telling him that he was going to saying that he was going to have a child, 
when when Abraham was given the news about the about about the upcoming child, Abraham laughed and he laughed out of joy uh, and thank and thanksgiving. When Sarah heard about the child which was about to be born, Sarah laughed, but her laughter was out of doubt, and she laughed in her heart, saying, "It says so in last week's in in uh, in two weeks ago's portion." portion she said, uh, uh, "Will I have a child that my husband is old?" And when God spoke to Abraham about it. He didn't say, why did Sarah laugh saying that you, Abraham, are old? She, he said to her, why did she laugh saying that she is old? God changed the truth. Abraham didn't laugh because she thought she was old, even though she was 90. But, but she, she, she didn't laugh because, of, because she thought she was old. She laughed because she thought that Abraham was too old to have a child. But when God spoke with Abraham about it, he covered that part of the story. And he said, Sarah doesn't, doesn't really believe that she can have a child. He didn't say anything about what Sarah thought about her husband being too old to have a child. There is the truth and there is the higher truth. Sarah, Abraham and Sarah had to be together in order for that child to come to the world. It is not a good time to say to, to Abraham right now what Sarah actually thought in her heart in order for them to be together. God, God himself, he changed, the, he changed what happened in order to serve the higher truth. And the highest truth was that Isaac was... was he had to be born. Isaac had to be conceived. They had to be together in order for, for them to have a son. That was the most important thing at that point. And God himself changed the truth because of that. When Rebecca was pregnant, Rebecca was given a prophecy at the beginning of our portion. Rebecca was told, you have two, uh, two nations in, uh, within you. You have two, uh, you have two sons, two nations are, are in your womb. And the, 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 the older one will serve the younger one it says and so the old so rebecca knew from the start that the older one esau was was was, uh, was, a, was supposed to serve the younger one at a later time and that's why and rebecca heard the voice of god saying that that's that's that was the thing that pushed her to do that and to say to jacob go and have the blessings and and if and when jacob is saying but what if what if what if my father curses me instead if he finds out the truth and i and i will be cursed rebecca didn't didn't think twice and she said i am taking that curse upon myself if you are if you are to be cursed there is the highest there is a higher truth than who was born first and all of that there is a higher truth than that when 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 moses and aaron were chosen to lead aaron was the old aaron was older than moses yet moses the youngest son in the family he was chosen to lead the nation in a way that no other prophet later later was able to do when uh, when Ephraim and Menashe, Menashe was the firstborn. Yet Jacob crossed his hands and he put his right hand on on Ephraim's head because he knew that he was greater than his brother. It's not about who was born first; it's about who is chosen from the womb. And Jacob had something from the womb, and Rebecca was pregnant, and that's why she was very confident about that. And here we see a fine line between the truth, the way that we see the human truth. Let's put it this way. And the higher truth, the truth of all truths. We say emet, that's the truth, and emet la amita, the higher form of the truth. And uh, and and we we genuinely believe that, especially in in nowadays, when the truth is something so fickle and and, and every and it's very subjective and and it's all depending. It all depends on the, the the point of view of the of of the one analyzing reality. Everybody gets to everybody gets to live according to his own truth. But especially in this time, especially in this in this generation, when when we are challenged to really know what true, what what is the truth, we need to go back and see what is the will of God, and may that be our truth forever. Shabbat shalom.